Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Heidi Ray, and on behalf of the Colorado Bar Association CLE, I would like to welcome you and our live audience and also all of the people viewing via webcast this afternoon to our monthly solo small firm talk. Uh, we have here today Bruce Paterka and Michael Wallace uh, here today to talk with us about using multiple merchant services, accounts, in QuickBooks. Um, if you could please fill out those evaluation sheets online and remember also to um, fill out your CLE credit online as well at cletrack.com. Um, with that, it is my pleasure to introduce to you your speakers for the next hour, Bruce Paterka and Michael Wallace. Bruce has had a extensive career experience as a business owner and a CFO consultant. His hands-on business experience includes a Fortune 100 company and encompasses finance, HR, logistics, IT, and sales and marketing. Uh, Michael Wallace is a CPA and served as a CFO for Alternative Data Technology Incorporated, which was acquired by Aero Electronics in 2006 and merged into Aero Electronics in 2009. He enabled revenue growth from 62 million to 840 million in technology distribution. So these uh, two have extensive credentials. You can read about them in your course materials, but with that, they have a lot to cover. So I will turn the floor over to them. Welcome, Bruce and Michael. Thank you, Heidi. Again, welcome to everyone here and on the web. Uh, the purpose of this today is a very simple approach we're taking as Peak Advisors has uh, acquired legal clients in the past that we do bookkeeping for, help them with QuickBooks issues, and those type of things. And we realized that there was some uh, knowledge missing. And uh, one of the topics that's very critical for all attorneys, particularly uh, the small practitioner who's hurrying around, has sole pra one person in or two lawyers in the practice and is quickly trying to get through the busy hustle bustle of the day and also deal with their bookkeeping using QuickBooks Online or using QuickBooks Desktop is keeping track of client payments. And it's not just client payments for the services you build, but it's also the trust accounts. And so in the past, as we've worked for and with attorneys in the Denver area, we said, here's something that more need to know. We approached Heidi in the Colorado Bar, and they said, sure, come on down and talk about this. Peak Advisors, we make QuickBooks work for you. We only work with QuickBooks. So if you're a Xero client or you're a Sage client, a Sage user or a Xero user, the only thing I can help you do is co convert to a better product, QuickBooks. This presentation, we're going to talk about how to use two different merchant accounts in QuickBooks and demonstrate how to use QuickBooks items and reports to accurately record the receipt of trust payments. And we may, if time allows, highlight a couple other applications that would be of interest to the small practitioner. These are simple concepts, but as with any type of bookkeeping, any type of accounting or software uh, concept, it is difficult to portray it in a PowerPoint in this type of setting. So, you know, at any point in the future that you have questions about this, you can give us a ring, you can give us a call, we'll help you through it. The materials we gave you are somewhat explanatory, but we can fill in uh, any gaps that we don't hit. So the problem we're specifically talking about today is that everyone knows you do not commingle trust account funds with operating funds. QuickBooks users who in the legal practice and many retail clients as well run into a problem where they can only have one merchant account integrated with QuickBooks. This limitation in the legal, in the legal profession forces the attorneys in the small offices to make a decision. Well, do I send out an invoice that the client can pay with a, a credit card or do I reserve the merchant account for use with retainer payments and other payments into my trust account? You can't use the same account for both. So you either, as I said, you use the retainer, use it for retainer payments, trust payments, or you use it for operating payments. 
Very few people realize that Intuit Merchant Services, which is part of Intuit, the owner of QuickBooks, does allow a second merchant account or even a third merchant account if that's needed or a fourth called a home office account. And this account is not at all integrated with your QuickBooks, either desktop or online. You access it through a browser. But the great thing about it is, from a legal perspective, is that you can set that account up to be directed to your trust account at the bank. And all processing fees that are normally charged for credit card processing are not charged, are not charged to the trust account, but are charged to the operating account. Now, pretty simple concept, right? But in practice, with the way QuickBooks and other softwares are organized, this it has been difficult to overcome over the years. So as you know, non, it's critical not to uh, commingle these funds, and non-firm funds cannot be used to repay the fees and that type of stuff. So with the second merchant account, you need to have the fees charged to the operating account, not the trust account. <coughs> so. What we recommend to the legal clients we work with is integrate the merchant services account with QuickBooks and allow, and allow clients to pay invoices from the invoice you email them. Everyone emails their invoices, right? No. Okay, we'll come back to that in just a second. And then you use this browser-based second merchant account for trust payments of any type. And you I will show you here in a few moments, but you will go online, access a portal, an Intuit portal, and you will then process those payments. So to the folks who said, I don't email my clients, my invoices, and let's talk about that for a second. Automation is taking over many aspects of our lives. And if you th stop and think about it for a second, setting up a routine in QuickBooks, desktop or online, that emails invoices to clients is a form of automation. And to do that, this slide shows right here what you need to tick off, that these boxes that says, which says that payment options are you can pay by credit card or you can pay by a bank transfer. You set the client up this way and then you send out an invoice. You have the email for the client, sends it out. And if you have a QuickBooks, uh, an Intuit Merchant Services account, not the second one, not the home office, office one, but the second one, if you have the first one sent tied to this account, anytime a client makes a payment, you're going to get information like this. You know the client has paid you. And it makes it very convenient for the clients, particularly those of you who are dealing with the consumers in the world, uh, individuals, because that's how they pay for things now. Businesses also pay for credit cards, uh, pay with credit cards, lots of things now, but individuals pay the vast majority of their uh, amount, the amounts they owe, with a credit card. I don't even have a checking, a uh, checkbook anymore. There are a lot of folks like that. So Bruce, at this point, anything you want to jump in and clarify, add to? Yes, thank you. The examples that Mike is presenting to you is from QuickBooks Online. So this is their cloud-based application that will help and operate your finances, your financial system, if you will. There is the traditional one that's been around for literally decades, which is referred to as the desktop product. And there are three different levels of the desktop product, but it's a PC-based application. Now, even on that application, similar to what you just saw a moment ago, where you have a couple little check boxes, you would have the same functionality available in the desktop product, requires a little setup, but you would have that same ability when you email an invoice to your client, they then have the option of paying it with a credit card or doing a bank transfer, an ECH transaction. What is ideal about this, again, is you get paid faster. 
Um, I was just sharing a statistic a little earlier that of the ideal three professions that uh, we find ourselves working with quite a bit is uh, they have a difficulty in actually getting paid. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to ask for the money, which is what the invoice is about. And then after that, it's what you get paid. But uh, the attorney is actually one of the um, markets and professions that having this a much easier process will be a great benefit to your cash flow for the, for the firm. So again, the ability to do this is not limited just to QuickBooks Online. It is available for the desktop, kind of traditional pro, premier, and enterprise products as well. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> so let's recap where we are here. So what we're recommending to you is, one, you need a second account. This is called a home office account. You'll obtain it through Intuit. And that home office account will be linked to your bank trust account. There will be no fees charged to that account. They will be directed to the operating account. Uh, and then, if you're not today, emailing invoices to clients, why not? Why not start that process? Um, so that's, uh, and you can do that in both QBO and you can do it in desktop. And frankly, I love getting these little reminders here from my clients when they've paid me to say, oh good, we've been paid, we've been paid. Now, in QBO, there is also the ability to see that the client has looked at the invoice. You know, the old, Bill, I need, you to pay the, I need you to pay that invoice I sent to you three months ago. Uh, gosh, I don't know which one you're talking about. I don't have it. I've never seen it. Well, if you go in the mail, there's no proof that they received it. If you email it to them, there's not proof you received it. But if you email them to them from within the QuickBooks program, you have a record of what the client has done with this invoice. So. I could pulled this out of hours a few weeks ago, but it shows they viewed it on a date here, they viewed it again, they viewed it here, they viewed it here. And just to um, you know, cut off the suspense, they have subsequently paid this to us, so I feel really good about that. But you do know if they're looking at it or not. And that's always the first thing on a collection call, isn't it, to say, did I deliver the information? Has the client seen it? This is a unique feature to QBO. All right. With Intuit, you can apply for the second merchant account in the normal process. So you go online, or you go, sorry, strike that, you go into your application, desktop or QuickBooks Online, and you start the application process. Now, assuming you already have one merchant account with Intuit, you take the application, and on it you write, this is a home office account. And that's the signal to the Intuit employees this is special. This is what we offer the legal profession. So, what happens in it into it, a case is presented, and a case number is created rather, and that case number then walks it through a special process in order to create that account. Or you can contact us and we'll get it to the right guy and you won't have to spend the time on the phone. All the information is confidential, but it is a special process at Intuit, and not everyone who you could talk to either via email or online, uh, via either email or an online chat or even a phone call, will be aware of how this process works. All right, so if you're using QuickBooks, we recommend that you have a Intuit Merchant Services account for your operating account, that you send out invoices to clients, allow the clients to pay via ACH, I haven't mentioned that, but they could pay that way, pay by a credit card, pay by a debit card. You can track that in QBO, as I showed you, and then apply for a home office account that you can then tie to your bank trust account. Now, Let's say we sent the approval in, you're waiting for it. There's some bookkeeping stuff that's got to be done to make this work most efficiently. Now, this is the stuff that's hard to communicate in a presentation like this, 
but let me walk you through it anyway. So what we call it is a trust account item setup. And these are items in QuickBooks. And if you're not using items in QuickBooks, either in the desktop or on the QuickBooks online, and you don't take anything away from what I say today or what Bruce says, start using items. It will make your bookkeeping so much easier. It will make the accounting and understanding what you're billing, what rates you should be using, so much easier. But assuming that you are, we need to set up a new item in QuickBooks Online. And to do that, as you may know, you go to the gear, and uh, you select products and lists, you select new, and you complete the form as I'm showing you right here. Now, right here is the key. So when you're using this, this is not an income account, but it is a credit account, a liability account, and it's trust payments received. You set that up, and every time you process a retainer payment or a payment to your trust account, you use this item. The importance of that can be shown on this schedule here. This is a, an example. We have a client named uh, Dorothy Doe. You can see that right here. And this is a report that you can generate out of QuickBooks if you use items, if you use the retainer account, if you have a second merchant services account. You can create a report by client of, here I received the $4,000. Here's how I consumed it. I ended up invoicing $1,500 on this invoice number. I invoiced the 512 on this invoice number. And ultimately, we worked it down to that there was a balance of zero. This is not a standard report in QuickBooks, either desktop or online. But this report can be created very quickly. You save it, and that's how you review the credit, that's how you review your retainer account to see where you are with each client. Bruce, anything on this? I'd just like to emphasize again the accounting structure, which Mike is referring to as being the liabilities. When we take on money from our clients as the trust, it still is not ours. We have not earned that money. So in the accounting structure, we're actually noting it as being other people's money. And as Mike referred to it as a credit account, that is exactly what it is. It is an account that sets funds aside. And by using the items, we can make this a much simpler transaction to recognize that we're, we are uh, issuing to our client an invoice, but it's being paid by the retainer. So the items make it easier than trying to do this from understanding debits and credits and accounting and all that. With just a little help, we can set up the item and you understand what an item is to do. You don't have to worry about the accounting. That's the confusing part for you know, those that are focused on your practice and taking care of your clients. How the accounting <laughs> works is more than necessary to do, but we can certainly practice that, yes, I have earned because of the activity I've done. In the example, you know, $1,500, I have earned it, so we're going to move that from that trust. It is now my money, and that's really what we're doing in this process. How we fund it is the objective of what we want to show you and teach you today. And again, that is that it is so common in our industry, in our world right now, that to use credit cards. Everybody likes to get the miles. Well, if you think about the trust amounts that our clients are paying, if they can do that via credit card, it's going to be a little bit to their advantage and they're going to appreciate having that option. You can always issue them an invoice and they can pay by a check. But in today's society, a merchant account. Keeping that commingling separate is really what the objective is and recognizing it's other people's money till you earn it. Yes, thank you. So again, the fix. Process your trust payment. To do it, you go to merchantcenter.intuit.com. Once you have this second account, this home office account, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. You're going to select from the screen processing tools, and then you're going to enter the amount and the credit card. 
Sorry, there's no way at this time to automate this, to make it quicker than that. But this is what the endpoint of this home office, the second account is. It is a browser-based processing of credit cards, whereas the, uh, the invoice amounts, your operating account credit cards are processed within QuickBooks. So that hits the highlights of this portion of it. So uh, let's do some questions on this if we have any at this time. Yes, ma'am. I'm using QuickBooks for Mac, and it looks totally different. Yes, it does. And I will let the Mac user address that. I greatly appreciate the fact that you are using QuickBooks for Mac. Yes, it does look quite a bit different. Uh, the functionality for you as a Mac user uh, is absolutely there. You absolutely can do exactly what we're giving an example. It is another form of a desktop product. And so from there, you can accept credit cards, you can process it, and you can get the second uh, merchant services account. And, and again, that's what's key about this. There are two separate merchant services accounts that we're talking about, one for the trust and one for your operations. And what you're uh, focused on there is the day-to-day, -day, whether you're billing for um, other activities for your associates and, you know, reproduction costs and travel costs and all that stuff, that's operational versus more specifics for the trust. The differences between the Mac product, the desktop product, and the online product for what we're discussing here don't exist. They're all the same. The Mac actually has, as in most applications, kind of a, I would call it a better twinkle to it. It has a much friendlier look to it. But the functionalities are exactly the same. Um, but the look's different. The look is different. Uh, I get the question quite often, even for desktops, some uh, folks, if you will, the old school thinking is, it's not a real accounting system. Well, absolutely. QuickBooks definitely does adhere to all of the rules that we really need in accounting for these activities. When that same individual looks at the Mac, they really wonder if it's a toy or not. And that's just, again, a perception that uh, it really is a, a worker. It does a great job. So you will find in there the ability to create invoices. You'll have the ability to attach the merchant services account, to email those invoices, just exactly as I mentioned, uh, or Mike talked about, for the QuickBooks Online and the desktop. So Mac is a wonderful product. Adrian, anything? Nothing from the web. Oh, need some more questions. OK. One of the things I'll add for this, yeah. the last slide here, for uh, if you can go back one, Mike, for the, uh, the fix and what you see for the merchant services. If you notice the header, you've got the home processing tools activities and reports and account. In this merchant center, you also have the advantage of looking at more of the detail for both accounts. You can see your merchant account for the trust and by selecting where it says at the top account, you can actually now switch to look at even more detail on the actual transaction and how merchant service functions so by clicking on the processing tools, you can start looking at where the activity actually comes to. If there's a need, there's also functionality to do returns so we can credit back on the credit card if that is necessary for a valid reason and return the funds the same way we, we received it. Again, keeping that co-mingling clean and, and separated. You get activity reports here as well as the product. Now Mike shows you a report that is designed and presented specifically out of QuickBooks Online. The same report is available on QuickBooks Desktop. We can design that and provide that to you. It isn't, again, a standard report. But also in that processing, or what's referred to as the merchant center, 
there are additional reports there that can show you different spans of time, the activities that have gone on uh, throughout the life or the use of these merchant service accounts. So you got reports for those activities as well as processing tools to receive money, which is what it's intended for, but also return. Yes, and I think I'll go back to the very first slide here and that you can see here again that we make QuickBooks work for you and your small business. This is all we talk about. We talk to QuickBooks clients, users of QuickBooks, how do we solve that problem? The small but important product, problem that we talked about today is, again, how do I get an account tied specifically to my trust account? Now, we are Intuit-centric. Again, that's what we do. And I'll talk briefly about three or four other products that uh, can help you in your small practice if you don't already have a solution for them. Uh, the first of which is uh, Funbox. Funbox is an online uh, lending company. They uh, will attach to your QuickBooks online file. They will look at it and make a judgment on how much they can lend you. And they will know, they will uh, um, lend you an X certain amount and they will automatically recover the payments from you in the future. So we have that unfortunate situation where you have unpaid receivables and you need to make a payroll. Funbox is a nice opportunity. It works with all products in the small business market, not just QuickBooks, but it works very slick with QBO, where you say, I need to draw this down, and here's how I'm going to pay it back, and it's once you make the decision to draw it down, click the box and say, okay, everything after that is happening automatically. Uh, T-sheets. Are the rates competitive for that, Mike? No, it's expensive money. I mean, there's no, there's no avoiding that. This is expensive money, but as we talk to our clients about it, say we encourage them, we encourage them to sign up and only use it when necessary when you have that situation where you have an opportunity to buy something at a great discount or you have a payroll and you haven't collected the funds yet. You know, all the things that affect a small business uh, that you worry about. Um, and then, of course, we can talk about T-sheets if you want to do that. T-sheets is another application that actually clips on or is added to your QuickBooks product, both desktop and for the um, QuickBooks Online. And what T-Sheets is, is a time and attendance tool. When I began doing consulting services, I was had sticky notes and all kinds of ways that uh, tried to be very creative on my notepads and trying to keep track of the hours and the time. Oh, did I start at 10.15 or 10.30? Uh, I just left a, and didn't realize that I left at 1.45 versus 1.30. And again, keeping track of the time, who I was with, was a real challenge. By utilizing a product like T-Sheets, you are accurate to the minute on your billable time. Switching from one application or actually one client to another client is just a touch of your thumb on your smartphone because that's where you would use the use the application is actually on your your phone and then when you're back in the office or administering the time and attendance you would do that from the website so what I found is that that service when you're talking about a quarter of an hour which is so easy to overlook when you're billing and working with your clients. I walk into a client, I start T-sheets. When I walk out the door, I stop T-sheets. And I know exactly how much time I've spent with a client. You can do this while you're sitting on your PC. You take a call, it's always running in the background. You pull up T-sheets and you click check in. And, or clock in as most people would think of it as. And it just keeps track of the time. You can put a little note <clears throat> what did we discuss? And that's all captured. At the end of any billing cycle or period of time, you can export all of that and it goes right into QuickBooks and will create those invoices for you. So now you are accurate, you are timely, 
and you're not spending a lot of time scrounging through notes and trying to remember who did I talk to, what did we discuss, you've got it all captured right there. And there are That's a lot of tools. And there are a lot of tools out there that do that for attorneys uh, specifically. This one is an inexpensive one. You know, it's you know for um, my la quote I did last week. Quote I did last week, four person firm, it's $25 a month. All cloud based, nothing for them to back up uh, on their own machines, that type of thing. And it interfaces in, brings the time in, organizes by client, and makes the creation of the invoices very quick. Uh, anything else? Uh? Well, also when you're looking at doing your accounting, for your firm and the activities you do, we're obviously working with our clients, but then we could have multiple matters that we're addressing. And that's also what you have within QuickBooks, and we mentioned earlier about using items. Well, the items, you actually create them to have you know a little bit of intelligence that goes along with this, and it's very easy for us to think of and recognize what are the matters that we're working with, all right? All that carries right over to T-Sheets. So when you're looking at your T-sheets and keeping track of your time, you're actually tapping on the customer and then the specific matter that we're addressing with that customer, and the clock has started, all right? And so one touch and the clock is off. We switch to a different matter. That's how easy it can be. Yes, and you know, for us, we're visiting clients all the time. To be able to take that with you is just a fantastic feature. You know, I'm not tied to a phone system that I have to punch in stuff, which I'm sure some have used before, and I'm not tied to my PC. Um, Adrian, any more any questions come in? Anybody in the room? Mm? Okay. One last product we want to mention to you, and this is uh, the best thing ever. Sorry, it is my opinion. I earlier mentioned that. Uh, we don't have che I don't have checks at home, personally. Our business doesn't have checks. That's how committed we are to this electronic processing of everything. We also don't have a real file cabinet. We have a little file cabinet. But everything goes into the cloud. The one thing that we use is a product called Receipt Bank. And Receipt Bank today interfaces with QBO. And essentially, as I wish I had brought a receipt to do a demo for you here. I didn't. But essentially, you take a receipt, you take a photograph of your receipt, you're at a client meeting, you go right on to who you were with, what you discussed, the business purpose, et cetera, et cetera. You take a photograph of it, and then the next thing you do with the receipt to file it is you tear it up and throw it away. And that is, again, part of automation in that this is processed off in the cloud by receipt bank, and over time, you build up rules for each of the restaurants you go to, the phone bills you get, the rent bills you get, all of this. And when they go to this inbox at Receipt Bank, oftentimes they're just processed automatically. And an item, a transaction, is created in QuickBooks. So there's no data entry. There's no filing of a form. Well, over time, as, this, as the software builds up some intelligence with you giving it instructions, you're not even, you're not even uh, having to tell it, oh, when every time I take someone uh, to this restaurant, it's a meals thing. That's what it is. So anything to add about that? No, it, it, uh, adapting to this level of technology is actually, once you do it twice, you've got it. It's just doing that first one or two, but uh, as we all are getting better all the time at using our intelligent little phones, that you know, seeing it, getting it lined up, just holding it there and just uh, touch the finger to take that photograph of that receipt is amazingly simple after you do a couple of them. And what I love about it is it's, You've got those funny shaped little narrow ones you get at the restaurant, and then you get a full sheet of paper invoice. It really doesn't make a difference what size it is. Receipt Bank takes the image, it goes up in the cloud, it's kept there forever. You'll always have access to it, and yet it is processing. It's one of the first things it does. It, once you say, you know, submit, 
it says processing, and it is reading the document. And with the rules that you've established, it then is taking care of your accounting right then and there. Again, as I mentioned earlier, none of you should be really doing much accounting. I mean, that's not what your profession is. And finding and working with people such as ourselves to help you do this stuff easier and get back to more of what you need to do, I find it you know, the case that really good practitioners are end up spending their weekends doing the bookkeeping when no. maybe they could be, there's a lot of other things you could either be working if you wish, but you could also be spending it you know, wiser doing other things. And that's why our firm has become so focused and quite sensitive about looking for ways to make this faster, more efficient, and easier for all of you because it's not what you really plan for your career is doing accounting. Give us a call if you have questions about QuickBooks. Any of the things we talked about, we'll be happy to help with you, to help you with these things. And uh, Bruce, wrap no, it up. I, th I think that does kind of wrap it up for what we wanted to present today. We hope and plan on being back and helping you guys out with QuickBooks and your accounting to a great deal because, again, I, I just can't say it enough. It, it's not what you guys should spend your time doing in the sense of keeping track of your books. That's what we can do very fast, very efficiently, and we're going to help you to have the best tools possible. Appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone.